believers, it's your old pal Spider-Man, and welcome to my spider web, or my shave done, den, uh, as I like to call it. I don't know why, I just started calling it that. But, this is my shave den, and this is kind of a year in review sort of video. Um, last year, uh, around this time, I did a uh, best of 2018, where I did a shave uh, using all of my favorite tools that I acquired that year. Um, I got tagged in a video by Nurse Dave, who was tagged in a video by uh, Elmer Fudd, who created this idea. And this is the 54321. Uh, so that is your five favorite soaps, your four favorite post shaves, your three favorite brushes, two favorite razors, and one favorite blade. Um, now they also put in a, uh, a bonus, which is their favorite frag. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, following their footsteps, I'm gonna tweak mine just a little bit, um, cause there's no rules. This is just a fun way to get some of our stuff out there. Now this is um, favorites, uh, not for the year, not for anything that I've acquired this year or this past year, but favorites in my den right now which means that anything I get over the next year, if I did this a year from now, it could change. Um, but this is just kind of my favorite things, uh, snapshot in time right now, um, what I have that is my favorite. So, um, I am ranking these in order, so I'm gonna go down uh, to my number one, my favorite. Um, but I had a really hard time with this. Um, when you got so much stuff, you got a lot of favorites. You got a lot of favorites for different reasons. Um, so I'm going to start off each one with an honorable mention. Yes, I'm cheating. Yes, I'm picking more than one. But um, they're for very, very good reasons, I think. Um, so, soaps category. Lots of soaps. Now, this was a little bit easier for me to do um, because I recently, over the last few months, kind of did a... Uh, mental exercise, um, well, not just mental, I actually enacted it, um, but I went through, the mental exercise was going through all my soaps and kind of figuring out which soaps I wanted to keep in my den and which soaps I wanted to purge from my den. Um, so we've been going through, you know, getting new soaps, trying different things out, seeing what I like, seeing what I don't, and some of them, like, were really good performers. I just was I didn't really care for the scent so much and didn't really care to um, explore the brand so much uh, and get and try out new scents and see what I like. So even though it was a really good performing scent, um, or a really good performing soap, uh, rather, um, I just decided to purge the whole brand from my den and not get any more soaps. So um, my top five right now might not be representative of what a lot of people think are some of the best soaps out there. But for me, um, I have reasons that I'm keeping uh, keeping them and that I love them. And so these are kind of my top five. Now my honorable mention goes to Jeeves of Hudson Street. Um, my favorite scent by Jeeves is Conservatory, which was the original name. It has been renamed to Mountain Rain. Uh, the reason this is honorable mention uh, it, it was my favorite soap for a little bit because um, I really love the way the lather feels on my face, um, partially because of the Babasu oil, which I don't think very many people use that oil, but it produces a very uh, soft lather. The reason this is an honorable mention is because he's no longer making soaps. Um, he, I know he's just kind of taking some time off. I don't know if he ever plans to come back to making soap, um, but I have like four tubs of this scent in my den so I've got enough to last me forever because I love 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 the scent so can't get it anymore so Jeeves of Hudson Street is my honorable mention so my number five is Mystic Water Soap um, my favorite scent is Lily of the Valley from Mystic Water uh, it's been my favorite from day one like I think one of my first samples that I ever got from her from Michelle when she started making soap um, I'm pretty sure I was deployed to Afghanistan and she had first come on the scene and said, hey, let me send out some samples, uh, you try them out. So she sent me a few samples and this was in it. Man, 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 I loved, loved, loved this scent. I'm not a big floral guy. I don't like florals really. Um, really can't stand rose. Uh, I love the scent, 
of flowers. I like the scent of lavender, but I don't like lavender in my shave stuff. So just something about most florals just to me don't work in in your uh, shave products. But Lily of the Valley really, really does. Love, love, love this soap. Um, and it's just one of those that like, when the when the uh, artisan boom first started, uh, Mystic Water was one of the very first ones that kind of came on, and there was just something about her poche feel that was different from everybody else's at the time, and so fell in love with Mystic Water, and that's why this will always be in my den. Next up is Oz Shaving Company. Um, I I have almost all of Oz Shaving Company soaps. I love them all. Uh, I think they perform very well. I think it's a very underrated brand. Um, and one of the most recent additions uh, was a limited edition for Halloween, which was called Full Moon. Love this scent. I hope it comes back. I hope it brings it back next year. Um, I've got the aftershave too. I'd really like to see it in like a cologne or an EDT. Um, kind of dark, um, but not like super dark like some of the other stuff that's out there. Um, but really, really love Oz Shaving Company soaps. Um, he's semi-local. Um, Oz Shaving Company, as a as in Wizard of Oz, he is in Kansas and named it after um, that movie and or the books rather. He was reading the books and decided to do his brand. So a lot of his stuff, a lot of the uh, soap names, a lot of the brush names um, are based off of characters, based off of themes from the movies and the books. All right, next up, Southern Witchcrafts. Another brand that I just love their scents. Like almost all of their scents are amazing. Um, they're kind of a dark theme to them. Just the whole theme of their soaps and their scents and the things that they put in their scents, I just love. Uh, this one is Autumn Ash, which is, I don't know. I can't, hard, I can't hardly describe it. It's just amazing. Um, it has a very uh, smoky, kind of um, fall leaves type scent. Just really, really good. It's got a sweetness to it. But Southern Witchcrafts, um, pretty sure this is a vegan soap and lathers amazingly well for a vegan soap. A lot of times when, uh, when you think about soaps that don't have tallow in them, then you don't really give them a lot of credit. This one deserves it. Lots and lots of great, great lather from Southern Witchcrafts, and I love it. Um, okay, this is a new one. Um, I decided to get rid of all of my Declaration Grooming soaps. Um, they, again, they were fine. I uh, just wasn't wild about the scents that I had. They were okay, just not great, but I found myself not using them. Um, and so I decided to get rid of all of my Declaration, which I think was only like two, um, that I had tried. Um, but then uh, I had a sample of Darkfall. Uh, way back when and decided that I wanted to get Darkfall and then they came out with their new base the milk steak base and So I had the opportunity to, to try that In the Darkfall scent, which I knew I already loved and I knew that the, the milk steak uh, Base was going to be a really high performing base. So I decided to try it and it is amazing this is probably one of the better lathering soaps that I have and I don't think anybody would disagree that it's not one of the best. Um, but this is the only scent that I have currently by Declaration Grooming. Um, but this milk steak base is really, really good. So I anticipate adding to this in the future. Um, even though when I did my initial culling, they didn't make the cut. This new base does make the cut. So as long as I can find some other scents that I like, um, I'll probably be adding some of this. Now... Top, number one soap um, is CBL soaps. Um, I just love CBL soaps. I've been a fan from the get-go. Um, his premium line is amazing. His new tonsorial line um, is really good entry-level soap. Doesn't have all of the exotic butters and oils and whatnot that makes your post-shave feel, feel amazing like the premium line does, but um, it's just a very bare bones, entry level. It's actually a copy of the old tonsorial version of Williams, um, which if you are a fan of Williams or if you know much about Williams, 
the new version, the modern, um, is not very good. You can get good results out of it, and I do, but a lot of people can't. But almost everybody gets good, amazing results with the tonsorial line, the older vintage pucks, and that is exactly what he cloned with the tonsorial line. Anyways, the two that I picked, and I have a really hard time picking between these two, is the roasted oatmeal stout, which is made with Guinness beer, and the Dragon's Blood, which was his first formula that had hemp oil in the formula. Um, both of these smell amazing. Um, both of these are just one of those that I just take a whiff of and just kind of like melt inside. I just love them. But I think the tops for me, scent-wise, is the Dragon's Blood. Mm, I just, it's, it's a very incense -y sort of smell. Um, if you're a fan of incense, uh, Nag Champa, um, things like that, it's sort of that type of scent. But if you're familiar with Dragon's Blood as a scent, um, I have a few other soaps from other makers that are Dragon's Blood. The, he's got the best one right here. I just love, love, love the Dragon's Blood. And the hemp oil just adds to the poche feel so much. Um, it's, it's really hard to describe, but that, for me is the top performing soap of anything. So, and we're done with soaps, and on to post-shave. Um, I said that the soaps was relatively easy because I had just gotten uh, done culling out everything that I didn't really like, and now only have the soaps that I love. Aftershaves is another story. I love aftershaves. Um, as you can see, this rack behind me, there's three shelves full of aftershaves. And that's not even all of it. I got more in my closet. Um, that aftershaves, like, when I first got into this wet shaving thing, um, you know, everybody goes through um, periods of rad, you know, razor acquisition disorder, sad soap acquisition disorder. Um, I went through each of those phases relatively quickly, um, you know, Got in, tried a bunch of stuff, happy with what I had, moved on to a different acquisition disorder. Once I had aftershaves, it was all over. Um, I just, I never got over it. I always am finding different stuff, um, trying out different things. That's the one acquisition disorder that uh, just stuck with me. Uh, it, aftershaves are just like... I think it's, aftershaves are very underrated. A lot of people don't use aftershave, um, especially I didn't uh, before I started uh, this hobby and getting onto the forums and learning about how to shave. I didn't use an aftershave at all. I didn't think it was a uh, essential part of the shave, and now I absolutely do. Now you just have to. So um, with having hundreds of different aftershaves in my den, um, it's really hard to just pick four. Um, so again, I cheated. I picked one more as an honorable mention, um, but I got a reason for that. So my honorable mention is vintage Avon uh, aftershaves. Uh, the one that I picked in particular is Spicy, which is a which is Avon's clone of Old Spice. Um, but I just love Avon aftershaves. Um, some of these things are... They well, they started making aftershave in like 58, 59. Um, so these things are like 50 plus years old. Um, as long as they've been stored properly, they're still good. Um, they made uh aftershave in all the funny shaped bottles, uh, different car shaped bottles, different all sorts. They had over 300 different shaped bottles that they made. Um, and you can still find these in antique stores, thrift stores. Um, grandma's attic, whatever, um, they're all over the place. And because they're so common, you can often find them very, very cheap. Um, so I would go around and buy, find them for, you know, one, two, three dollars for uh, up to an eight ounce bottle of aftershave, which is just unheard of to get uh, aftershave that cheap. So that is why I love Avon. Um, there's over a dozen different scents of Avon. So you've got a lot to choose from and lots of different scents, very cheap. You can buy them on eBay if there's a specific bottle you're after, um, but if you just want the juice, just go around antique stores, thrift stores, see what you can find. Um, and they're, 
they were made back in a time where we used quality ingredients. And so the aftershaves are very rich smelling. They're very, um, the longevity is great on them. Uh, unlike a lot of stuff that you make today, they're made with cheaper oils, cheaper scent products, whatever. And you put them on and then an hour later you can't smell it anymore. I personally, I like to have scents that last. Um, and Avon does that for me. So that's why I like Avon. That's why it's my honorable mention. Now, moving on to things that are made today that I can just go out and buy. Uh, my number four is, again, we've seen this brand, Southern Witchcraft's uh, Alchemist. I love this scent. Um, I didn't get it at first um, because when it very first came out, um, somebody bought the full set of the soap, the aftershave, and the uh, ED, EDT. Um, and they were turned off by the scent and that one review just like triggered something. And so I kind of avoided it because it's really hard to read scent notes and go, oh yeah, I'm going to like that. Or no, I don't really, I don't care for that because sometimes there'll be a scent note in it that I don't care for, but it gets buried in all the other stuff and I end up liking it or vice versa. You can read all these scent notes and you can read um, 10 different things that you like and whoa, that should be amazing because I like all of that. But then when you get it, the way it's mixed and the way they interact with each other, you're like, mm, I thought I was going to like this and I really don't. And so buying soaps and scents and things like that is really difficult. And that's, that's kind of what turned me off of this because everything looked like it was going to be fine. And then one guy said he didn't like it. And I don't know why, but that turned me off to it. Um, Ended up buying a sample of the soap, tried it, instantly fell in love. Now, I did buy a lot of the Southern Witchcraft soaps. This is the only aftershave I bought because I think the Alchemist scent is so great and somewhat close to all of the other scents, at least in theme, that this is the one that I use with all of my other Southern Witchcraft soaps. It's very versatile. And as long as I'm using something that's kind of in this dark theme, this is going to go with it very well. Um, so that is why I love The Alchemist. Next up, number three is Spike. This one is just amazing. It doesn't have the longevity of the scent, which is fine. Uh, it's very crisp and clean smelling, but what it does have is awesome ingredients. If I have a rough shave, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna follow up with Spike. Um, it just feels amazing on your face, really good healing properties to it in the ingredients. And that's why I love this one. Just hands down, if I want something to heal my face, um, this is what I'm gonna reach for first. Number two, Razor Rock Motherfucker. I like this hands down best scent ever in an aftershave. Um, I, I don't know why. Uh, it is just amazing. I can't really explain it that well. It's very cologne which for me is usually a bad thing. I don't like things that are cologne that harsh, like cheap cologne scent. That's why I'm not really into a lot of frags. Uh, I prefer the sense of aftershaves to the sense of colognes for the most part. I'm starting to get into frags, but it's very difficult because, again, it's hard to tell what something is gonna smell like, and I hate that cologne scent. Now, this aftershave lasts all day long. It's super, super, I don't wanna say strong in the fact that it's overpowering, but it does last all day, eight, 10 hours at least. Um, and the first couple times I wore it, I really noticed something very cool about this is that, excuse me, for the first half hour or so, all the top notes were there. And then when those burned off, it changed, which is very common. Um, and then it changed into something that was good, even maybe better. Um, and then a couple hours after that, it changed again. It, it cooled down or dried down again and changed again. I was smelling different things. And when I'm applying aftershave, if you've watched my videos, you know this, 
right after I apply it to my face, I rub it on my arms. And that is so that throughout the day, I can just get a whiff of my arm and see how the projection is, see how the dry down is, see if it still smells, see if it's staying with me all day, or I hit noon, nope, I don't smell anything. So that tells me that probably not smelling it on my face either. Um, this, I, when I wear this, I can't help but just keep smelling my arm all day long because it smells so good. Um, I've stocked up on this. I got like four bottles of this in reserve. Um, just love it. Now, my number one aftershave is Skin Bracer. Uh, I When I very first got into the hobby, uh, the first place I went was the grocery store, checked out all the dime store, drug store, uh, grocery store, aftershaves, Old Spice, Skin Bracer, Brute, uh, Aqua Velva, uh, English Leather, bought them all. This is the one I liked the best. Um, it's got a very, not overpoweringly vanilla, but it's got an undertone of vanilla to it that's very nice. Um, I just, I, it's very crisp. It's got a good uh, menthol boost to it. So in the summertime, it's a really good um, scent to use. Uh, I love mixing this 50-50 with Brute, which gives me something that's very close to vintage high karate. Uh, which isn't being made anymore. So if you're looking for something like High Karate, Skin Bracer and Brute Mixed, bueno. Um, but this is my favorite overall aftershave. Um, very cheap. You can get seven ounce bottles for like four bucks at the grocery store. And for me, this is just a winner. Okay, that was my aftershave. Now, number three, we are at brushes. Um, so I, again, I, I pretty much pared down my brushes to just a few different makers. So, um, this again is a pretty easy list for me to go through. My honorable mention does go to, uh, Rich Shaves, which I just recently discovered, uh, these brushes. This is the Blood Oath brush, which is so cool. It has a razor blade, an actual razor blade in it, and swirls that make it look like it's bloody. Um, I can't rate this any higher right now because I, I just got this uh, a week or so ago and I've only been able to use it once. Um, I did get a synthetic knot for it, um, which does have uh, a lot of backbone in it compared to any of my other synthetics that I love. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about that yet, um, but I'll be using this more and um, we will be getting some better opinions on that. But the handle is amazing. The handle is huge compared to all my other brushes. Um, so it feels really good in your hands. Uh, it's got an amazing feel to it because it's so much bigger than most other brushes. Um, so that's my honorable mention. Rich Man Shaves. Now my number three brush is going to be my uh, TSC, the Shaving Cadre, one anniversary uh, brush that was made by Eric Sorrentino, also known as Smata U on the forums. Um, I got this in a cashmere knot, very soft, very springy. Uh, just love the work that he did on this brush. Uh, I think they call this shock wood, where it's got the wood mixed with the uh, acrylic. And just love the way this turned out. Uh, they did pre-orders on this and only took so many orders. And once everybody ordered them, he ordered all the blanks. And so it was just random. We didn't get to pick the handle. It was just totally random. He made them and then he just uh, sent them out uh, according to your um, brush pre uh, preference. We could pick between two, three different uh, brushes, I think. And so he just randomly put the brushes in and sent you what you got. And I just love this. I love this little uh, knot in it, that little red eye. Um, just really cool. I got some yellows in there, some greens and whites. Um, and then they put in the TSC coin. I just love this brush. Um, use it quite a bit. So that's my number three. My number two... We've heard this name before, Oz Shaving Company. Uh, all of these brushes up here, except for my Rich Man Shave, these are all Oz brushes. Um, I got a few more on the top shelf that you can't really see. 
Um, most of what I get from him are synthetic knots. Uh, really just a, a, a fan of his handles. Uh, this is a polychrome, uh, and this is probably one of the few that I grab most often. Um, I'm a huge fan of the synthetic knots, and over the past year, I've definitely, definitely used more synthetic knots than I have Badger. Um, and when I'm grabbing a just random <clears throat> synthetic knot, Nine times out of ten, I'm going for my Oz shaving brush. So uh, that falls into my number two. And uh, just a favorite of mine. Now, my number one um, is Paladin. Um, if I'm going for ba Badger, uh, pretty much the only Badger brushes I own anymore are Paladins. Um, I... I can't really pick a favorite, so I just happened to pick this one because it's one of my newer ones. Uh, this was off of the 2019 Halloween release, and um, I don't know the knot code on this particular brush, um, but the the newer brushes that he has are some of the best he's ever gotten in. Um, and these are the ones that they say they've got the gel tips, people rave about the gel tips when you get it wet. the bristles kind of stick together like the they kind of interlock or whatever um, just it's really one of the softest brushes uh, I've ever used softest badger by far um, I've gotten rid of shave max I've gotten rid of Simpsons uh, the only thing now that I have that's a badger is paladin so that's my number one brush pick okay number two we're down to razors um, this, again, was a little bit of a challenge, but not so much uh, because I already kind of knew what my like top five razors were and it's it wasn't too hard to narrow it down to like my top three. So my honorable mention goes to my Blackland Vector. Um, the reason it is an honorable mention is because it is a uh, single edge razor. It is a uh, Feather Artist Club style, so it takes the AC single edge blade which are not the same as like a gem blade or a schick injector blade um, which are also uh, single edge razors but the vector is just a it's a no-brainer um I, I these things are expensive uh off the bat i i had some uh gift cards that knocked the price down considerably for me so i don't actually have that much into this one um, but I understand if you don't have one already, it is quite an expense to get into one of these, but I'm telling you, it is worth every penny. And I have not said that about very many razors, especially very many razors that cost over $100. Um, most of them I, I get and I try and I, I get rid of them. I sell them off to somebody else. This is the one that almost everybody that I've ever heard use it just raves about it. I've, I don't even know that I've heard a negative review about this razor. Um, it is just smooth, intuitive. It looks weird. Like it looks like it has a really thin handle and it would be awkward and it's just not, it's really just a smooth shaver. So that's my honorable mention, mainly just because it's a single edge and I wanted my top two to be double edge razors. So my number two is uh the yuma um now this thing uh just comes in a little teeny cardboard box um lux tras abrari i don't even know if i'm saying that right but that's turkish and it means luxury shaving apparatus um luxury it is not i will tell you right now this thing is not a luxury item when you think luxury you think expensive you think quality you think built with the most expensive things, the best things, built to incredible tolerances. No, this is a cheap razor. I bought this on eBay for $8 shipped. Um, it is pot metal. If you look really closely at it, you can see there's dips and dings and whatnot in the head. It is very cheaply made, very cheap pot metal, very light. I think this is like 17 grams, very super light. All that aside, this is the best razor I've ever used. Um, I don't understand it. I don't understand how I get such good shaves from such a low quality and cheap razor. 
I'm baffled myself, but I have been using this razor almost exclusively for the past three or four months. Um, the combination between my blade, my favorite blade, which we're getting to, and this razor, I have gotten at least two months off of that razor blade. Um, two months of daily shaving. Um, it's very mild. So if you like aggressive and you don't like mild, it definitely steer clear. You're not, you're probably not going to like this. Um, but if you like a mild razor, and especially if you don't mind super light razors, I like light razors because I can apply more pressure and that's a bit more natural for me. And heavy razors, when you apply pressure, you're gonna end up cutting yourself. Um, so you gotta be a little bit more careful. So this allows me to put a little bit more pressure, which I kind of enjoy. Um, just That's just the way I've adapted my technique over the years. Um, but I understand this is cheap and it's not gonna last forever. So I bought backups, um, they're cheap. So I bought like four of them. Uh, so if anything ever happens to this one, I'll just go grab another. And it'll still be cheaper than every other razor that's out there on the market. Um, so uh, my favorite current shaving device is the Yuma. It's not the number one, even though it is my favorite, it's not the number one. Um, because my number one of all time is the Gillette Vintage fat boy. Um, this thing is built like a tank. Uh, it's adjustable. So you do have some options of the aggressiveness of your shave. You can do different things with it just because it is adjustable. Uh, if you want to start off aggressive and then end off mild, you can change it up. Um, but looking at it in terms of a bug out bag, let's just say the zombie apocalypse really does happen. Am I going to grab this? No. Because if I drop it, if somebody steps on this, if somebody does something, this thing's going to break. I'm going to be out of razor. This thing is going to last forever. Uh, and I'm not going to have any issues with this because, it, like I said, built like a tank. Good weight, good heft. I like the fact that it's a thicker handle, a little bit shorter of a handle than some of the other razors. Um, and so this, from day one, the first time I ever acquired one of these... Um, actually found one for three bucks at an antique store. And from that day, this has pretty much been my favorite razor. Love using it. I get some of the best shaves from this. And it really kind of, for the longest time, kept me off of modern razors because I was doing so good and getting such enjoyable shaves from vintage. I didn't see how modern razors were going to do anything else for me that these didn't. And... I got a case of rad lately over the last year or so, got a bunch of razors, and guess what I found out? Nothing beat this. Nothing. Except for the Vector, but that's a different system, different blade, so you can't really compare the two. Um, but as far as the double edge, uh, I didn't really find anything that gave me anything better than my fat boy. So um, there's no sense in spending $100, $200, $300 on a razor uh, when one of these is... Um, all I need. Okay, down to number one, which is blades. Um, this is a pretty easy choice for me, although I do have another honorable mention. Um, my honorable mention is feathers. Um, I love them. I, I steered clear of them for the for a very very long time. Did not. Um, I, I guess there was a lot of talk on the forums about them being unforgiving, very sharp. Um, and as a new wet shaver, I didn't want that. So I avoided them. And for some reason that just trickled on, trickled on. And it was like four or five years of wet shaving before I even picked one of these things up and actually tried it. By that time, my technique was down. I was uh, an established wet shaver, so to speak. And when I tried it, I'm like, what's the big deal? These things are awesome. Like, why are people saying these things are hacking their faces up? Well, I don't know, but I just loved them. Um, and I've actually shaved with one of these uh, and gotten pretty good longevity. The very first time I ever tried to push a feather to see how many shaves I could get out of it, I got 66 shaves. The next time I grabbed one and tried to see how far I could go, I got 115 shaves off a feather. I know a lot of people use these once, twice, three times, and then pitch them. Why? 
I don't, I mean, everybody's different. I get it. Everybody's face is different. Everybody's whiskers are different. But I used it 115 times. And everyone's like, oh, they're so cheap. Just, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use it for one or two shaves and then pitch it. Well, that's 10, 15, 20 cents every few days. As opposed to, if I use this for 115 shaves, that's like a buck a year on blades. So... It's a huge difference when you can get the longevity like that out of a blade. And I know I'm special and I'm different and uh, nobody else can do that with a feather. Well, I'm sure some people can, but that's why I like them. Now, my go-to blade is Persona. Um, I buy these packs of them in these um, cases, I guess, uh, Dispensers, that's what I'm looking for, dispenser. Uh, from the BX, uh, the base exchange on the Air Force Base. And um, these are like $1.50 for 10 of them. So 15 cents a piece. Um, not super great, but cheap enough. And um, really, really like them. Uh, so we'll buy these ones uh, online in a 100 pack for 10, 15 somewhere between 10 and $15. So a little bit cheaper to buy them in the pack, in the 100 pack than to buy the individual packs. But to me, they shave the same. Um, and again, this is the blade that I was talking about using in the Yuma that I just recently got at least two months. I wasn't keeping track, but I know I used it for at least two months before I pulled that blade out. Um, so this Personas are my go-to blades. Okay. This video is getting long, so I'm going to wrap it up here in just a minute. But the bonus, bonus, bonus is frag. Uh, I said I'm not really into frags that much, um, but I do have a fair amount. But a lot of them I just kind of use, and I'm, eh, I don't really know if I like it. But one of them that I just recently acquired that I just love is Barrister and Mann's um, Fougere Gothique. Um, Really, I, if you got the scents from me by my aftershave and my soap talk, I like dark scents. I like scents that you would associate with Halloween or that type of um, motif, if you will. The Fougere Gothique took the case, took that to a next level. Um, I, I initially really liked uh, Barrister Man's Hallows. Um, but then the more I used it, there's a, there's some note in there that was really kind of getting to me and was very pungent. And somebody at work told me that when I used that, it, it reminded them of church. Um, that's not really what I'm going for, even though I was looking for the dark type sense. Um, I do love the Southern Witchcrafts Alchemist, and I have that in the cologne. Um, but this Fougere Gothique is really dark, really strong. Uh, one spray and it lasts all day um, and this is my new favorite scent um, and this is eau de parfum so this is a very much stronger than your eau de toilettes your colognes uh, eau de parfum is very strong that's why one spray is all i need so even though this was fairly expensive for a 50 ml bottle um, it is going to last me f about forever I'm close. So that's why I bought two. Because eventually, eventually, this is going to run out. And when it does, chances are, Bearster Man may not be around anymore. I don't know. I hope they are. But maybe they won't be making this scent anymore. Even if they are, they won't be making this scent. So that's why I wanted to make sure I always had this because I love it so much. So that is my... Five, four, three, that wasn't good. Five, four, three, two, one. Plus a bonus. Uh, so thank you, Nurse Dave, for tagging me and allowing me to explain um, what I love and why I love it. Uh, I know I've taken a whole lot more time than y'all did making your videos, um, but I like to go into some, into some detail. Uh, I like to tell a little story, tell you what's going on. So thanks, Nurse Dave. Um, thanks, Elmer Fudd, for starting this and getting the tag uh, train rolling. And I am going to tag uh, Major Rich 
from Rich Shaves uh, YouTube channel. I'm going to tag Stanley, student shaver, and I'm going to tag Angelo from Wet Shaving with Angelo. Uh, so I will get you guys notified and so you can start thinking about your videos and get them done. And we will see you guys on the cadre. We'll see you guys on Facebook at Rich Man Shaves. And we'll just see you when I see you. So later and uh, enjoy your shaves.